Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Kung bago ka pala sa channel ko, huwag mo kalimutang mag-subscribe at ihit mo na yung post notification bell so that you will be updated on my latest video. So disclaimer lamang, uh, credits to the rightful owner of the content used in this video, no copyright infringement intended and this is for educational purposes only. So I hope na makatulong tong video na to sa inyong statistics class, sa ating mga teachers and students out there. Kasi ito na yung pag-start ko na paggawa ng mga video regarding statistics. Kung meron kang video suggestion ay please comment down below. So ang title ng video na to ay Be Organized kasi i-organize natin yung mga data na nakalap natin. So how do we present the results of a study? So in some researches, so in creation of new, new knowledge, So, napaka-importante na i-present natin yung result ng study natin. Uh, it can be in different forms. So, napakahalaga na i-organize natin yung ating data so that we would be able to make uh, conclusion, summary, or recommendation in a specific study that we have. And then, there are different forms on how we can present the data. So, it can be in textual form or tabular form. So, pag sinabi natin textual form from the word text, eto yung mga nakikita nyo sa mga narrative report. Ayan. So, sentences siya. So, sentences para makabuo ng mga paragraphs to narrate or to describe something. So, we're in, kapag binasa nyo siya, ayan. So, doon yung malalaman kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng isang uh, research. So, pwede rin naman in tabular form, wherein you're going to make tables. So, napakaganda din na i-present yung data using tables. Or pwede rin naman graphical form. So, dito sa graphical form, marami din siyang advantage. So, by means of graph, makikita natin dito yung trends. So, one of the best examples ay yung uh, Meralco Bill. Diba, nakikita, nakikita tayo doon ng graph and that is a bar graph. Nakikita natin kung yung ating electric consumption ba per month ay tumaas or bumaba or same lang. So, we have different kinds of graph. So, we have horizontal bar graph, vertical bar graph, multiple bar graph. Ayan. So, yan yung mga pwede natin gamitin on how we can present the data by using graphs. So, meron din namang pie chart, histogram, ayan, line graph, and pie graph. So, yung pie graph naman, so, common na common na to, so, where yung isang buo, or yung isang hole, ay uh, hatiin nyo into parts, or partition. Kapag naman picture, picture graph, so, by means of picture, ipepresent nyo kung ilan ba yung students, just like in our given example, kung ilan ba yung naglalaro ng baseball, football, uh, soccer, etc. And then, maglalagay ka lang daan ng legend. Ayan. So, ngayon naman, tuturuan ko kayo kung paano ba mag-present ng data using the FDT or Frequency Distribution Table. So, wherein yung mga nakalap mong data na tinatawag nating raw data ay i-organize natin into table. So, napakahalaga nito in terms of measuring uh, central tendency. I know that some of you are familiar with the average. So, sa pagkuha ng mean, median, at mode. So, pwede rin yung mga measures of variability just like getting the variance, skewness, uh, standard deviation, etc. So, halimbawa dito sa example natin ay nag-ask ka sa mga classmates mo or yung teacher ay kailangan i-interpret yung result ng mga classmates mo. Halimbawa ay nag-exam kayo sa geometry test. And then, ito yung kanilang mga scores. Let me say you, ha you are 50 in a class. So, therefore, there are 50 scores Given. So, we're in yung mga scores na yan ay randomly. So, hindi pa siya naka-arrange from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So, ngayon, pwede nyo munang stop yung video at copyin yung data so that you would be able to follow the steps that we need to follow in constructing an FDT or Frequency Distribution Table. Ayan. So, There are 50 observations. So, ginagamit natin ang FDT in presenting raw data, lalo na kapag sobrang dami ng observations. Ayan. So, the question is, how do you organize the raw data? So, eto na nga yung gagawin natin. 
So when we say frequency distribution, it is the organization of raw data in table form. So using class intervals and frequency. So when we say class intervals, ayan, nakalagay dan yung 20 to 30, 30 to 40, at yung range into which data are divided. Halimbawa, di ba magtatanong sa ano, ilan dito na ako ng 40 to 50? Itaas yung kamay. So, yun naman yung tinatawag nating frequency, the number of data values that fall in the range. Halimbawa, yun yung passing grade natin, yung 40 to 50. Halimbawa, 1 to 50 yung test. So, yun yung bumubuo sa frequency distribution, kukuhanin natin yung class intervals, at kukuhanin natin din yung frequency. Of course, meron tayong formula or steps na dapat sundin para makapag-construct tayo ng frequency distribution and you have to be careful in constructing FBT kasi ito ay domino effect halimbawa, pag nagkamali ka pa lang sa umpisa of course, yung makukuha mo mga measures of central tendency or variability ay magiging mali na rin so yun yung uh, isa sa mga disadvantage ng statistics so domino effect, kapag nagkamali ka magkakamali ka so, eto na, paki-take note po yung mga steps na kailangan nating sundin in constructing a frequency distribution table. So, there are steps that we need to follow in constructing a frequency uh, distribution table. So, table siya, tapos kukuhanin natin yung per column. Of course, meron tayo dito mga steps na dapat sundin. And then, Eto, the first one is we need to identify the highest value or HV or pwede rin naman tawagin highest observation or HO and the lowest value LV or the lowest observation. Of course, gagamitin natin dito yung raw data kanina. Eto, halimbawa, yung mga scores for your first geometry test ng 50 students. Of course, the number of observation is 50. Two, we need to calculate the range. So, it is denoted by capital R. Then, the formula is highest observation minus lowest observation or highest value minus lowest value. So, titignan natin yung data. Among the given raw data, ang pinakamataas ay 100. At yung pinakamababa ay 70. So, we need to subtract it. So, 100 minus 70 is 30. So, therefore, our range is 30. Again, the first formula that we have is the range. Yung pinakamataas na observation minus yung pinakamababang observation. Then, there you have your range. So, please take note of that. So, therefore, in our given sets of data, our range is 30. Again, kailangan yung i-observe mabuti yung data kung ano yung pinaka-lowest at ano yung pinaka-highest. Okay, so yung ating third step, we need to find the number of class intervals using Sturge formula. Again, please take note of the Sturge formula. So you may use calculator in finding your K or the class intervals wherein it is denoted by K wherein the formula is 1 plus 3.3 lag N. Again, the formula is 1 plus 3.3 lag N wherein your K is the number of class intervals and N is the total number of observations. So, we have our solution. 1 plus 3.3 lag 50. Again, your N is 50 because we have 50 scores. And then, isang type nyo lang siya sa calculator then enter. The result will be uh, 6.61 and so on yung marami pa yung kasunod na decimal places but your final answer should be rounded to the nearest whole number again take note that your class intervals must be rounded to the nearest whole number since 6.61 i-round off natin to the nearest whole number the answer is 7 so, ang gagamitin natin k i 7. Again, in finding the class intervals, take note of the formula and then uh, ear around of natin to the nearest whole number. Then, another formula is finding the class width. So, in finding the class width, we have the formula r over k. So, take note of the steps 2 and 3. Yung r natin ay range, yung k natin ay class width. Sorry, class interval. So, you just divide it. So, our range is 30. 
divided by 7, your class interval, and then the result is 4.28. And then, take note that your class width must be next whole number. So, ano ba yung next whole number sa 4.28? Of course, 5. So, ang gagamitin natin class width sa paggawa ng class intervals ay 5. Okay, so step 5. The beginning of the first class interval or the lower class limit should be near the lowest value. And be a multiple of the class width. Again, you need to take note na kailangan siya ay multiple ng lowest score para makuha natin yung first class interval para makuha natin yung lower class limit so you need to take note of that again, pag nakuha na natin yung class width so pag na-divide nyo yung range at yung inyong class interval hanapin na natin yung ating mga uh, class intervals Okay, so nagkataon na ang ating lowest observation ay 70 at that is a multiple of 5. But how about if the lowest observation is 68? So ang gagamitin natin a uh, lower limit ng ating first class interval ay 65 because 68 is not a multiple of 5. So ang gagamitin natin ay 65. So, going back, so 70, so magbibilang lang tayo ng lima. So, you have 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, because that will be your class width. And it should not overlap. So, therefore, yung second class intervals natin ay 75 to 79. So, para mas madali, you just add 5 dun sa ating mga low, uh, lower limits. So, yung sa ating lower class limit, so 70 plus 5 is 75, plus 5 is 80, Plus 5 is 85. So, ganun din yung gagawin natin sa upper class limit. And then, yung last nating class intervals ay 100 to 104 because ang ating highest observation ay kailangan pasok pa rin sa interval which is yung 100. At pasok siya sa class interval na 100 to 104. So, ilang class intervals yung nagawa natin? So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we have class, uh, 7 class interval. Ang class intervals ay dumidepende kung ano yung pinakamababa at yung pinakamataas na observation na pasok doon yung mga value. So, hindi lagi siya ang 7 yung class interval. So, pwedeng maging 5, pwedeng maging 6, or higit pa. Okay, step 7, obtain the class boundaries. So, gagawa tayo ng another column for class boundaries. So, dito sa class boundaries, madali lang, we just, just subtract 0.5 sa ating lower class limit at plus 0.5 sa ating upper class limit. Pero hindi laging 0.5. Specifically, kapag experimental research, minsan mga 0.005. Or using the formula, you just subtract the lower class limit of the second class interval minus the upper limit of the first class interval divided by 2. Or simply 75. Minus 74 is 1 Divided by 2 is 1 half or 0.5 Kaya naman ang isusubtract at idadagdag sa ating mga class limits ay 0.5 Again, hindi laging 0.5, meron siyang formula So, katulad ng sinabi ko So, lalo na kapag mga experimental research, hindi siya 0.5 So, mas mababa pa sa 0.5 But, if the given observations ay whole number, of course 0.5 and plus 0.5 lang ang gagamitin. So, step 8 natin, find the midpoint or class mark of each class interval. So, another column for class mark. So, ang gagawin lang is lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2. So, let's have yung 72. Paano na ko yung 72? 72, you just add. 70 plus 74 is 144 divided by 2 is 72. So, same with 77. So, 75 plus 79 divided by 2 is 77. Or simply, since nakuha nyo na yung 72, you just add 5 na lang since that is our class width. So, 72 plus 5 is 77. 77 plus 5 is 82. And so on. So, para makuha natin. So, sa number 9, you are going to use your raw data. Itatalin natin. So, iisa-isa nyo yung score so you can use a manual. Halimbawa, 85. So, hanapin nyo kung saan class interval pasok yung score na 85. 
and so on, pwede rin kayong gumamit ng Microsoft Excel. So, alam ko na familiar kayo sa paggamit ng Microsoft Excel. So, explore nyo lang. So, nakikita nyo dito sa screen yung inyong formula na gagamitin. So, gagamitin natin yung count if. And then, you just enter the data set. Ayan. So, meron naman yung instruction once you, you've typed yung count if. So, explore nyo lang siya. Or kung hindi naman kayo gagamit ng Microsoft Excel, you can use uh, manual tally. So, iisa-isayin nyo lang yung scores at hahanapin nyo kung saan class interval siya pasok. So, there you have your tally. So, ganun yung gagawin. Dito sa tally the row scores and indicate the frequency for each class interval, mag-highlight yung cells. Halimbawa, yung sa una natin, so ilan yung nakuha ng 70 to 74. So, highlight it here in red. So, diba, tinight nyo lahat ng inyong scores in different cells. Ayan, naka-highlight dito sa red. So, ilan yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, there are 7 na nakakuha. So, therefore, yun yung lalabas doon sa frequency. Ayan. At kapag tinotal natin yung frequency, so ito yung pinaka-table natin ng FPT, pero yan ay hindi pa talaga kompleto, kailangan ng total natin ay 50. Kapag hindi 50 yung frequency natin, please check baka there's something, observation na nagkamali kayo. Ayan. Again ha, i-double check natin yung frequency. And then I have here activity na ginawa ko. So, about frequency distribution table, tapos meron na din siyang graph. So, I have here two problems na pwede nyo pag-aralan. Again, sa mga gusto makakuha ng free copy ng aking activity, just comment down your uh, email address na ginagamit. At kapag meron pa kayong video suggestion regarding statistics, ay gusto ko din siyang gawa ng video para makatulong sa inyong lahat. Again, ayan yung aking ginawang video at pinakita ko rin dahil yung step-by-step solution at pwede nyo rin itong magamit sa inyong klase, specifically sa mga teachers natin na nanonood ng video na ito. So, ayan. So, I hope na meron kayong natutunan sa video na ito. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Again, mag-comment lang tayo dun sa comment section if you have any video suggestions na gusto nyo pang gawin ko sa mga susunod pa nating mga video lessons. And, see you on my next video tutorial. Bye!